Hi to another video about web services. Today I'm going to focus on something that might seem strange at first because we're going to use products from two different companies. I'm going to use TMSX data to implement the web service itself, the web server. And I'm also going to use another product which is tightly bundled with Embarcadero Delphi now, the C data exchange component, which allows us to access any exchange server, including Microsoft Office 365 servers. Without any hesitation, let's talk about what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to build an X data server, as I've shown previously. However, this one is going to bridge to Microsoft Exchange and will not have any Aurelius components on it. That means this server will just be the bridge to Microsoft Exchange. The data is provided as XML or JSON. You can use whatever you want to do, but the key is I'll provide it as a data set using FireDAC. This makes it very easy, and that's the final step, to show the data in a VCL Forms application in a grid or whatever component you choose using the standard FireDAC components that are included in Delphi. Furthermore, I'm not going to use any XData specific components on the client side. I'm showing this with the Embarcadero REST client service set that is included in part of Delphi by now. As I've already produced quite a lot of videos that show how to build an X data server, I'm not going to go into detail here. This is the X data server that has been created using the new wizard provided as part of X data. And I added or I removed first of all in the server container anything that has to do with pooling and Aurelius because we're not going to use Aurelius or the pooling that is um, part of that if you want to use the ORM technology that XData supports. So we're just going to use the XData server. We are going to change the URL of the XData server where we want to access it. In my case, that's port 80 root flix. And that's all we have to do in the server container. There's no source code of any sort. Of course, we are also not going to modify the main form. We're going to keep that as is. There's also no code added apart from the standard template code. First of all, I added the database controller. I called it the database controller. It's nothing more than a FireDAC connection and a FireDAC query. And of course, we need the storage links for XML and JSON because we want to provide data in that format. That's how FireDAC works. So how do you set up the connection? So you drop a TFD connection on the form, double click it, and as driver ID, you specify C data exchange. I did all this in the data explorer and created a so-called template or a connection definition. And this connection definition contains the server for any Office 365 exchange server. It also sets the authentication the right way. I only provide the username at this stage, of course. Um, I can delete it at this place because username and password, of course, are going to be specified by the client requesting any data. I don't know why this um, stayed in here. So this username would be your email address if you use Office 365 and the password would be the email password that you use. And if you provide this, I can show this to you in the Data Explorer, Fire DAC, and you see here the CData Exchange data source. And we have Flixmans. And then you can see right here, if you go into the tables, you see that we get full access to the Exchange server. We get access to the calendars, the contacts, the inbox, and also outbox sent items and the tasks. So this um, gives you access to a lot of tables. And our interest here will be the contacts table. And for that, we define a query, which will link to the connection. And the query will simply state select star from contacts. We can't execute this here because obviously we don't have username and password specified. If you do this, you can actually see everything during design time already. These are the design time components that you need for this to work. Let's get to the key part of the server, the service. We need to add an exchange service. I created this service using the service wizard. That's also part of TMSX data using file, new, other, going into the TMSX data category 
and created a TMS X data service. I created the service as such that the interface and the implementation is both in the same file. And here you can see I simply created one method called get contacts as XML dataset. And I specified this as an HTTP get and the T stream is the result value. This is something I took from the XData documentation. If you want to do everything yourself, you simply specify T stream. XData makes it extremely easy for me to specify these service methods and also have a server ready that reacts at the endpoints I specify. So my endpoint would be considering that I had specified port 80 and the root flex, it would be port 80 flex exchange service and then slash get contacts as XML dataset. I picked HTTP get as the method type to show you something else that's nice using xdata um, to get the uh, parameters from the body of the message. I could use, of course, um, a uh, HTTP post and specify them as parameters. I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated to show this aspect of the flexibility of xdata. Going right into the source code, we find the mention of the TX data operation context. This is a class that you can use to get access to the request and the response using the current property, current request headers. Then you can ask, does a certain field exist? So we check for username and password. This is something I set up, of course, username and password. Be aware, of course, for demo purposes, this is fine. But if you would use this in a real world scenario, of course, you have to take care of encryption that username and password are not being broadcast to the world. So we get the user and the password using the headers get method, as you see here. And then we provide the XML data in a memory stream or a string stream. And what we do is we get the database connection in a local variable to make accessing it easier. And then we close the connection in case it is already open. We specify the username and the password to the connection. And then we simply open the query. And at this point, our query contains all the contents of the address book of your exchange server for the user that you specified. So if you have an exchange server with many, many, many users, this will be the local address book for the user that you specify with the username and password. And then I simply call the save to stream method of the fire deck query in order to save the data to the lmem stream and in the format sfxml. Just for information, you could also specify sfjson or SF binary if you wanted to, but I, I picked SF XML and that is assigned to the result, the stream itself. Why did I use a string stream? I don't know. You could as well use the memory stream or whatever stream you want to use. The reason why I used a string stream initially was that I wanted to return not a T stream, but a T string because that made it a little bit more difficult. If you return a string, X data would create its own JSON around your result. So using the T stream data type is actually an advantage at this point. Finally, if the format of the request isn't right, meaning for example, there's no username or no password, I raise an exception. And here I have the uh, opportunity to create a certain exception with a certain status code. I uh, selected simply 404 not found. Of course, this has to be uh, more sophisticated in a real world application using the appropriate HTTP codes for the appropriate exceptions. Here you see the started X data server. It reports its uh, root URL, how you can access it. And what I do here is I opened a Fiddler window or used Fiddler to um, compose with the Fiddler Composer, I composed a, um, a GET request to Flex Exchange Service GET Contacts as XML dataset. I also provided username and password in the body. I um, removed it from the video, obviously. And here you see the um, result that has been returned in XML format. And you see that FDBS version 15, that's something is FireDAG specific. The nice thing that you can see right here is you get a column list with all the different properties 
And I won't scroll down anymore because you ha just have to believe me that the data is also in there. But it's an XML document of the data set as a representation. So uh, in Delphi, you can actually use any Fire Deck query or FD MEM table and load this. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. So we're switching over to the client application. And this is just one form with a grid or the TDB grid standard component. And this might be a little bit overwhelming at first. I, I just did it like this so I could drag it into the right order for you to realize what I'm doing here. So we have a REST client. A REST client is something that I can use in Delphi to access a REST web service. So what do I want to access? I want to access localhost Flix. So there's nothing xdata specific here. And what do I want to use? I want to do a request. What do I want to request? Well, I want to request the resource exchange service get context as XML data set. Okay. And here in the params, I, I want to show you because then you will see my email address and password because I set it up. Um, here you specify two parameters being username and password being passed on as a um, part of the header. And then the response is also set to the to the request. This is a component that you can use to read the response. Finally, for the um, FireDAC part, you need the table, which is of type TFD mem table. I named it table. And you need the XML link again so that the table is able to read XML. For the visual representation for the grid, you need the data source. The data source links the grid to the table. That's all that's happening here. So score wise, you will be quite surprised how easy this is. So when the form is being shown, I simply call the request object with execute async load data and load load data is the method that is being called as soon as the data is ready for processing by our application. So load data has a byte stream and only if the response status code is 200, meaning it's successful, we create the stream. And we create the stream based on the raw bytes of the response. That is something um, specific for the component that's included in Delphi. This response is this response component here. And it has a property raw bytes, which is exactly what has been transferred from the web service. And we set the stream position to zero. And then we simply call table.loadFromStream this stream, of course. And the data type is XML. We could also set this to auto, then uh, I think FireDAC would determine, oh, this is XML or this is JSON. So it would even be flexible here. Let's just keep it at XML and then we can dispose of the stream. That's it. Let's run this. Be aware the server has, of course, to be running. And here we go. This is my address book. And again, I'm only showing you the item ID field because um, I don't want to share any personal or sensitive information from anybody. Believe me, all the information from my exchange address book is in there and you've seen how quick it was. So um, this is actually a nice thing that happens. The um, Fire DAC connection pooling works. That means if you keep your data if you even if you open and close the fire deck connection fire deck still offers connection pooling if you enable it so the the hit that you encounter connecting to your exchange server the first time only happens once after that the connection is pretty snippy actually so this is really really something you can do, use in your professional applications if you don't want to deploy the exchange components or if you want to restrict the access to your exchange server to certain things this is the way how to do it this is the way how you can provide an api easily to other developers to other customers using the exchange data provider what does this mean it means that x data is open for any other data provider that you can think of there is a huge amount of C data providers that are included with the Embarcadero product, but also other third party developers provide a lot of data providers for other stuff using FireDeck. So, FireDeck in this place offers a huge variety for you to use, but not only FireDeck, you can use any other um, data provider in a data module and 
mend it into an X data server, or of course, you could also use a web broker application or something similar. But I just wanted to show you the advantages of X data, a third party product from TMS, how well it works with other um, third party products and how flexible it is that you don't need to use any X data specific stuff on the client side if you don't want to. Xdata does not prohibit usage of other formats. If you don't want to use them, just use TStream as your format and you can determine how you want to format your output. Hopefully this video helped a little bit to get rid of the prejudice that Xdata service can only be consumed by Xdata clients. That's all for now about web services with TMX, Xdata and Exchange.